This was played at Skopje. Skopje in Macedonia. This was played in July of 1968, so I was just turning four years old when this was played. The second Solidarity Tournament. So D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, Knight C3, Bishop G7, Pawn to E4, Pawn to D6. Knight to f3, castles, bishop to e2, and pawn to e5. Bishop to e3. And White's got all of his pieces out, all of his minors. He still needs to castle. Black's a little bit slow in his development here. Center's closed up a bit. And you want to keep the position locked up when you're behind on development. You want to open it up when you're ahead in development. Try to create lines of attack for your long-range pieces. Well, nonetheless, black is the one that initiates the trade in the center. Queen to e7. Queen to c2. So now Ullman has every single piece out of bed except for the rook on a1. It's a very favorable when you got all your pieces out, you have better attacking chances. Now knight b to d7. Rook f to e1. Pawn to a6. Portish taking a sweet time. Hoya, 221B, welcome to the program. Oh, what was the year of the Fisher game? I'm sorry, Horrible Pawn, that I missed your question. The Ulman Fisher game was, um, stand by. I'm going to find it here. Uh, delut, 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 delut. The Ullman Fisher game was July second, um, nineteen six. Oh, this says June twenty third, nineteen sixty. My mistake. June twenty third, nineteen sixty. June 23rd, 1960, for the fisher Ullman game. Okay, so rook A to D1. Now every single piece. As a chess coach, this makes me elated. This is the type of game I want to show my students at least from White's perspective anyway. Every single piece out of its bed into the board, looking at the center, looking at the center, looking at, oops, the center, looking across the center. This is the only guy not looking at the center at the moment. Rooks looking up the center. The center of the board will yield a sure reward. So move your pieces toward the center of the board. 
Because it is from there they can move anywhere. So move your pieces toward the center of the board. Get those pieces out of their beds and toward the center. Pawn to B5. No doubt intending to play bishop to B7. Pawn to B4. Bishop to B7, as predicted. A bishop to F1 has no other purpose than to get out of the way of the rook. Rook F to D8. Pawn to A3. Just doing some pawn structure maintenance. No knight to E5. Probable knight exchange taking place here. Yes, takes, takes. And you can guess where that bishop is going. Boom. If you're a beginner and you have difficulty trying to figure out where to put your pieces, look for your opponent's targets. King, queen, and anything that's undefended and get those pieces on the lines with those targets. Any king, king, queen, king because it's the most important piece, queen because it's the most powerful piece, undefended pieces because they're undefended pieces. Or if they are defended, pieces that you can attack with less. So if a rook is defended, and I can still attack it with a bishop, for example. So queen to e8, pawn to a4 now. And this... Um, pawn to a5, pawn to take c4. White is no, uh, seemingly in no hurry to recapture and get in line with the enemy king. He wants to prevent any pawn breaks first. Um, beginners like me would be in a hurry to capture that pawn to get my bishop out of bed. But apparently, Ulman did not want the possibility of pawn to a5. Although I don't know that that's really an issue here. But nonetheless, he played a5. Keeping Black's A-man stuck right where it is. Giving him no room to expand. Rook takes rook and rook takes rook. Now keep in mind, your rooks love the open file. Knight to d7. Defending with the knight. Could that have been his reason for playing a5? Just to create a square for the knight. It might have been as much a reason as the other, because I didn't really think the a pawn push would have been the issue, an issue. Maybe way back here, he was thinking, you know, when he plays knight here, I want to be able to defend that. Because I, I did not see pawn a5 as being a real issue. That's just as likely to be his purpose. Now that I see the move, it's easy to proclaim. <laughs> Knight to f8. No bishop's going to take c4. I'm not real sure why that... Why he wouldn't have taken the bishop there. Um, this bishop 
is a lot better than this knight. I, I'm okay. Maybe he does not want his own his other bishop to have to run back to c8, cutting off the communication of the rook and the queen with each other. And even for a GM, that would be a hard move to make. So knight to f8. Bishop takes c4. Now knight to e6. Knight to b6. Well, you got to play to d8. Oh, he played to b8. I think don't give your opponent the open file. I mean... All right, well, let's look at the position. Is white really that much better? I guess he is. So maybe black is just reluctant to trade. White's got all the mobility here. Look at all this power. And this shows you the benefit of getting your pieces developed. You get a lot of initiative a lot of the time. You get control of squares, and now he can't get to those squares a lot of the time. Okay, knight to d4 begs an exchange here, but nothing doing. Guy's got too much power looking up this direction. And already, Black resigned here. Black resigned. Maybe you're wondering, why did he resign? If you're a beginner, you're counting pieces and you're saying, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six pawns to one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. Two bishops to two bishops. One knight to one knight. One rook to one rook. And one queen to one queen. It's black to move. He, he's got no good move, really. You've got all this attack coming here. <laughs> he's almost already in Sugsvang. <laughs> What move can he make? He's got nowhere to go. Any suggestions for a move from Black? I get the feeling that Black looked at this, looked at his equal number of pieces, Look how coordinated White's pieces are compared to Black's pieces, all discombobulated. This bishop can't go anywhere, stuck behind his own pawns. The rook can't go anywhere. Now it's too late to try to trade off rooks, because if he does, check. <laughs> Can't take now because of check. If you try to block here, check. Okay, so what about 96 says uh, horrible pawn? 
So knight e6. Bishop takes e6. F takes e6. Probably black's best bet was knight e6. Horrible pawn's probably right about that. Double up your majors on the open file. No influence, no scope. Maybe you'd like to attack this rook. So you decide to play something like <laughs> bishop f8. Not so fast. White might be just willing to let you have his rook in exchange for the other rook. Oh no, better yet. How about creating a fork right here? How do we get the knight to f6? Well, if you take... Have fun losing your queen. And if you move your queen, I don't even know where you'd move your queen. You have to just redefend. So that can't be taken. But if you do that, <laughs> oh my goodness. So Portish realized he was hopeless. There was nothing he could do. He resigned. 